Hey guys, this is Chris from Deus Ex Machina, and today we are going to learn the one to four player game Naramata, created by me and published by Deus Ex Machina, which is also me. So let's learn how to play. In Naramata, players will be assuming the roles of tour guide operators traveling from Penticton all the way to Naramata in Okanagan wine country. At the beginning of the game, you pick up tourists and, and try to satisfy them through visiting the various wineries along the route. At the beginning of the game, each player selects a vehicle. In this case, we have the uh, black vehicle, the white vehicle, and the silver vehicle. There's, in total, six potential vehicles to choose from. Players then, uh, then pick up the matching meeple, veeple, and color-coded discs. For this game, we are going to play with three characters, so the remaining characters will be returned back to the box. Shuffle and put out the upgrade cards. As we can see here, there are cards that are reserved for four player games and cards that are reserved for three and four. If you're playing with two players, remove any of these cards. If you're playing with three players, like we are uh, with this game, remove the four player cards. Then shuffle the deck and draw out four cards across this row. This row indicates uh, the available upgrades you can purchase. The cost is indicated above here. This one doesn't cost anything. It just costs what we have listed here as five. This one costs one more, so it's indicated by this. This costs one more, this costs one more, this one costs one more. So this one costs eight, this one costs eight, nine, ten, and this one costs seven, eight, nine, ten as well. Retrieve and shuffle the tourist deck. Hand out five cards to each player. Each player places one of their discs at the five point indicator on the point track. Shuffle and place the purchase, tasting, and cheese decks in their respective spots. Generally, the last person who's been to a winery goes first. In this case, we will pick the white player. That player goes at the beginning of the clock on the bottom of the tracker at 11 o'clock. Then clockwise, each player places their meeple above it. The order of height determines who goes first. The person closest to the, to the time is the next player. As we will see in, as we play the game, the person furthest back in time is the next player to go. As this is a three-player game, we're gonna be setting out these favor bottles. In a two-player game, you only put out one for each signature winery. If it was a four-player game, you would use them all. In a three-player game, randomly pull three bottles and place them on the board. Put out the two token trays, easily accessible to all players. You may think you need to place your vehicles on the board, but you actually don't do that just yet. Also, set the cork day tracker to day one. You can set how long you want to play the game at the beginning or partway through the game. I recommend uh, selecting that at the beginning of the game because it does change your strategy throughout the game. For this, we are going to be assuming a three-day game, which is standard. If this is your first game and you're still learning, potentially just limit yourself to a two-day game. And if you have a lot of time and know how to play the game, try the challenge of the four-day game. At the beginning of a day, each player looks over their hand of five cards and selects one, one tourist to play. Although you can do it at the same time, it's not terribly necessary. Each character reveals the tourist they selected. At this point, you have a choice. A player may either discard that tourist to gain two prestige. These are prestige tokens, and they are double-sided with one and two denominations. Alternately, you can play this tourist in your vehicle. Once you've selected and either played or discarded a tourist, your hand shifts clockwise to the next player. The process then repeats with the new hand. You continue this until you just have one card left. That card is discarded without gaining any prestige. In this example, the white player has decided to, to uh, keep only two turrets, and because of his special ability, he gains one additional prestige, which means he starts this round with six prestige. The silver player has opted to do two and has four prestige, Black player has selected three tourists and has two prestige. As for these remaining discs, one of these is an extra point tracker in case you cross 100 points. Three of these are your action discs. Place these on your board. The last disc is an extra action disc that you may acquire if you acquire a certain upgrade card. The red player has an extra disc, and that's the reason why he can potentially have as many as five action discs. Each player has a specific bespoke ability. We've just talked about the, what the white player can do. The silver player can end the day at six o'clock without a penalty, and the black player can cross parallel lines. This means his vehicle can cross these roads where most players have to follow the path ahead of them. He must always select a winery in front of him, however. The blue player 
can park on the side of the road to have a pairing and they always gain S8 prestige when doing so. The purple player can ignore the first two penalties for tourists at the end of the day. I know this actually says one, it says two in the manual, the manual is correct. At this point, based off player order, players then place their vehicle meeple in one of these two starting positions. Now, the actual position may be important as this one has more cheese, this one has more tastings. In this situation, the white player will pick the upper route, the silver and the black will place the lower. The game may begin. On their turn, a player must move forward along the map and select one of the wineries in front of them. Once you select a winery, you can never go backwards. You must always follow the road. If you reach a branch, once you select a branch, you cannot reverse course to go on the other branch. There is no limit how far ahead you can actually go, but be, be wary, you may run out of space before you run out of time. You then move your meeple along the path to a winery of your choosing, and then select one of the available actions at that winery. When you select an action, you must first lock it out. Place the appropriate matching token, place it on top of the action, and place your meeple on top of that. While you're at a winery, no other players may select that winery, regardless if there are any available actions. Once you leave, this action re remains locked out for the rest of the game. There are opportunities to have these removed, but for all intents and purposes, this action is no longer available. All other actions are still available, even if a locked action is between you and the road. Every action has a time cost. A cheese action costs 30 minutes, pairing two hours. A favor is an hour, purchase is 30, tasting is 60, and a photo is 30 minutes. As the white vehicle has selected the tasting action, they advance their meeple one hour. Every action has a very specific sequence of events that must be carried in order. Select two cards from the tasting deck. Select one card to attach to one tourist. If you wish to place both, the second one costs two prestige. If you don't place a second one, you can trade that extra card to gain the prestige award along the bottom. In this situation, since I have no, ta uh, no tasting cards attached yet, it'd be best to attach this one and then discard this one as it has a larger reward. A tourist, e each tourist has a very specific criteria of what makes them happy. These are satisfaction rows. In this case of this tourist, they want photos, they want favors, and they want pairing. With this tourist, it's cheese, tasting, and pairing. The vast majority of tourists will want a pairing. So with this card, we will place it behind this tourist as they require a tasting to be satisfied. And per the discarded card, we gain four prestige. As you can see here across the row, there are several uh, upgrade cards that allow you to modify actions. This one, you can place a token, an action token on it to reduce an action by 30 minutes. This allows you to always gain nine prestige when you do a pairing action. This gives you a plus two to any, any rolls dealing with photos, and this one allows you to draw one extra cheese card. As it is now the black vehicle's turn, they're going to move along their road and choose one of these actions or any other winery along the route, but they're gonna choose the earliest cheese action. As before, place the lock token onto the action and place the vehicle atop of that. A cheese action costs 30 minutes. Move the meeple to the lowest point, 30 minutes ahead. If it was an hour action, you would place the meeple above, but as they are on their own row, they go to the bottom. Just as the tasting, you draw two cheese cards. Cheese actions operate exactly the same as tasting, except the rewards, as you, as you will notice, are smaller. In this situation, we're going to try to place both. That involves spending two prestige to play the second card. As this is a set collection game, you cannot place the same card on the same tourist, which means as these are a different cheese cards, these can be attached to the same tourist. If you had drawn two of the identical cards, you could play them on different tourists, but you could not place them on the same tourist. The silver player is next, and as you can see, they cannot select this purchase action, and they cannot select this winery because the player is here. If the player moved on, this action would still be locked, but this action would still be available. In this situation, the player wants to move all the way to do a purchase action, locking the action and placing the vehicle atop. The purchase action costs 30 minutes, so they'll move atop the black player. The purchase deck, although appearing to function similar to tasting and cheese, actually functions differently. Draw two cards from the deck. You'll notice that these cards do not have a prestige reward. Instead, the prestige symbols are inverted. That's because these are a cost. You may acquire any number of, of purchase cards that you have drawn. However, you must be able to afford the cost across the top. In this case, we have drawn two identical cards. 
This is not a set collection, so if I wanted, I could place both of these on the same tourist. Now, the silver player can't actually afford either card. As you can see, they only have four prestige. However, there is an additional function with these action tokens. Without an upgrade changing their behavior, an action token can be discarded to gain one prestige. As these action tokens regenerate at the beginning of each day, this is a great early way of spending currency that you know you'll get back. In this situation, the silver player will spend all four prestige plus one action token to place one of these cards. And the card is placed behind the tourist, just like a tasting or cheese card. The unused purchase card is discarded. Despite the initial arrangement, the black player is actually next to go. They are closest to their time and they are the furthest back on the clock track. The black player can select, once again, any winery ahead of them. They can't select this winery as the, as the white player is there. They can't select this one as the silver player is there. However, they do have the ability of crossing roads. However, in this situation, they're going to move ahead to the pairing action. As before, place the lock token on the space and place the meeple atop it. A pairing costs two hours. However, it also comes with a prestige award. This reward is based on when that player took the pairing action. The closer you are to one o'clock, the greater the reward. In this situation, the black player has taken a pairing action at 1130, so they would gain only five prestige. The advancer tracker up two hours. You never need to do more than one pairing action as you gain a pairing token for every single tourist that requires. In this situation, only one tourist actually requires a pairing action. The player then gains five prestige. So we can see here now, the silver player is next to go. The silver player select another cheese action, which is just slightly ahead on this winery. However, we're gonna skip that turn and go move back to the white player. The white player is going to select the favor action. This is the only action that does not have a lock token. Place your vehicle meeple on the space. When you land on a favor space the first time, you only retrieve one of the available bottles at that winery. You also immediately gain three points. On subsequent days, if, this, if a player lands on a favor spot and they possess the matching bottle for that signature winery, they may accomplish any of the available actions at the same time with a one hour cost benefit. This means that uh, if this was day two and the white player is landing on the spot, they could do all three actions for only one hour. As this costs one hour, these two cost a half hour, minus one hour becomes one hour. However, if you just did these two actions, it would still be 30 minutes as you cannot reduce an action below 30 minutes. A favor costs one hour. However, you'll also notice an additional benefit to signature wineries. These spots all have an additional little, little symbol with a thumbs up. This indicates that this is a signature winery. Some tourists actually wish to visit signature wineries for an additional benefit. In this situation, this is exactly what has occurred. This tourist wishes to visit signature wineries indicated by this symbol and these points. Place a favor token. If you happen to visit a second signature winery on this day, you can flip this to its two value. You can gain up to three favor tokens for this tourist indicated by the points listed here. Placing favor tokens on a tourist does not take up any time. The only time cost is from the favor action which we just accomplished. This means if the player has selected either of these other, other actions, they would still gain the favor token without an additional cost of time. As we also indicated, there is a fourth player option here. As this is a three player game, this action is not available. However, you can still select any of the available actions on a subsequent day if you have the matching bottle of that signature winery. We're gonna skip the silver player. He selected another tourist action, which means the white player gets to go again. In this situation, the white player is gonna move ahead and select this spot, a photo spot. As before, place a lock token, place the meeple atop that. Advance, the, advance your meeple 30 minutes. It goes atop of the black player, which means the silver player once again goes next. There are no cards associated with the uh, photo. You just get to roll this die. This die has a bunch of photo symbols. One, two, three. Roll the die and gain that many tokens. As most tokens, these are double-sided with a two value on the opposite side. You can actually gain as many as four tokens. However, each additional to token costs one prestige. In this situation, this player has gained three tokens, so it can spend one prestige to gain one additional token which is exactly what we're going to do. In this situation, the player is going to spend one prestige to place down four tokens. This tourist wants photo tokens. In fact, they can, they can actually have as many as six. There is another action that's not listed on the board called a pit stop. A pit stop is a 30 minute action that gains you some needed prestige if you require them. To complete a pit stop, accomplish the following. 
move ahead to any winery uh, uh, in front of you and select one of the actions. Lock that action as you would normally, but you do not accomplish the action. Instead, roll the die and gain as many prestige as that value plus one. In this case, the silver player would gain three prestige. As the groupers are on the same time, the black player would go next. But at this point, I want to talk about satisfaction. Each tourist will have anywhere from two to three requirements. Each of these lines is a satisfaction line. If you do not have any assets connected to that line, that, that tourist is unsatisfied for that requirement. In this situation, we have two cheese cards attached to this tourist, which means even though they are not maxed out on their points, this row is satisfied. This row is considered satisfied even if you have one asset of that card or token. However, at this point in time, this a tourist has no cards for tasting, so this row is unsatisfied. Likewise with purchase. This tourist here has all three rows without any assets, so this tourist is completely unsatisfied. And although they have a pairing token for this player, the other two rows are unsatisfied. If we were to end the day, this player would incur numerous penalties for unsatisfied rows. Now I want to explain how to acquire these upgrade cards. As stated before, the cost is listed on the top of the card, increased by where it is upon this row. This is 5, this is 7 plus 1, this is 8 plus 2, and this is 7 plus 3. You can acquire an upgrade card at the beginning of an action or at the end of an action. You cannot do it during an action. So if this white player is doing a tasting action, before he lands on the space and activates the action, he can purchase an upgrade. Alternatively, if he's completed the tasting action, he can then purchase an upgrade before the end of his turn. As we can see here, the white player has more than enough prestige, plus these three unused action tokens to purchase an upgrade at the beginning of his turn. In this situation, he's going to spend seven plus one, that's eight, to acquire this card. Place the card on the bottom of your player area. I generally like placing the card underneath, concealing the cost as it's no longer needed, and keeping the action visible. In this situation, you would place an action token for free at any point to reduce the action you're committing by 30 minutes. You can do this multiple times as long as you have additional tokens, but you cannot reduce an action below 30 minutes. As we now have an empty spot, we shift these rows down. This card moves on, this card moves over, and we draw a new card in the new space. That means this card is now cheaper. It only costs 8 plus 1, 9, 7, 9, and this one's now 10. Now, I won't go into detail on what all of these mean. Check, check the manual for that. This one, for example, does allow you to end the day at 6 o'clock. So as the silver player already has this ability, they would not select it another time. You also notice, once again, duplicates are the same ability. You cannot possess duplicate cards. It's also important to note that each card has a point reward. These are not gained at this point in the game. They are flipped over at the end of the game and you score additional points based on all the cards you possess. In this speculative situation, this player has gained five upgrades. You can only have five upgrades operating at any point in time. If you gain a new upgrade, you must select one upgrade to be deactivated. To deactivate it, simply remove it and flip it over and place the new card. At the end of the game, all the cards, active or inactive, are flipped over for points. Anytime you gain a new card, you can select which card gets flipped over. Subsequently, at the beginning of a day, you can determine which cards are active at the beginning of that day. Let's jump to the end of the day. As we can see here, the white player is at 4 o'clock. The other two players are at 4.30, which means the white player goes next. As we can see here, they can't select this action, but they can still select this winery. They cannot select this winery as this other player is there. They only have one hour to spare, so they are going to select a tasting action. This moves them to 5 o'clock. They can still complete that action even though they are at the end of day. The black player goes next. They're located at 4.30, closer to the time. They can complete a 30-minute action without any penalty, or they can complete an hour action that will move them into the red. For every 30 minutes you go past 5 o'clock, you lose 2 points. In this situation, that's exactly what they'll do. They'll select this winery, select a tasting action, and advance the clock an hour. This places them past 5 o'clock. They lose 2 points. As stated before, the silver player does not suffer penalties for going past 6 o'clock and can complete actions all the way to 6 o'clock. However, in this situation, the silver player is in a bit of a bind. As they can only move forward, the both, uh, both potential wineries ahead of them have been locked out by the other two characters. So, despite the fact that that character can potentially do uh, one or potentially more actions, as that specific player can continue past red without severing a penalty, they have nowhere to go, so they must end the day. They place their vehicle meeple to the far left at the end of the road. They then move to the beginning of the day on the day tracker. This means that they will go first 
on the next day. The white player is next. They'll move beside the silver player and they'll move their meeple to 11 o'clock above the silver player. That means they will go next at the beginning of the next day. End of day is considered an action as you must move your, your vehicle on your turn to the end of day to complete the day for everyone. It's at this point all players must trade in their tourists, gaining points for how well they're satisfied and potentially incurring penalties for roles that are unsatisfied. All tourists must be traded in regardless of how satisfied they are. At least pointed out, these rows here indicate how many points you gain depending on how well that tourist is satisfied. In this situation with photo, they have six tokens and six tokens maxes out your points at seven. These favor tokens, generally because they are free, don't award as many points. We have two tokens, so this row awards two points. Finally, the pairing awards three points, so the total for all of this is seven plus two plus three, 12 points. With this, we can see that this player has three cheese cards. That's five points, one tasting, that's three points, and the three points for the pairing. There are no penalties as every row has at least one asset. One tasting card still counts as being at least partially satisfied. At that point, all these tokens and cards are returned to the supply. Players reset their action tokens. They keep any prestige they've earned from previous days. The white player for this turn scores a total of 23 points, moving them to 31. Additionally, gain points for purchase cards based on the value on the upper right. And as always the case, the points awarded is always one higher than the cost of the card. Now, in the case of the black player, things did not work out as well. As we can see, although this player has several rows satisfied, there are some that are missing. For example, this tourist does not have any purchase cards and no tasting cards. This tourist here does not have a purchase card. Players have penalties per this table for every line unsatisfied. In this situation, we have three rows unsatisfied. The third row indicates a seven point total penalty. As you award points before subtracting them, this player began with 18 points. However, they must lose seven going back down to 11. After all players have traded in their tourists, advance the day. As you can see by this arrow, this tells you the direction you hand off your cards during the drafting phase when selecting tourists. You'll notice in the manual, you can actually gain information on what all the upgrades mean here. Just to clarify, on this action, even though it gives you a plus two to the die roll, it only applies to view tokens, not any other instances when you roll the die. At the beginning of the next day, players still remain at the end spot until they have finished the draft phase, as in this case, a silver player will get a, a, a first pick on which starting path to land on. And this is important to do it after the draft as the tourists you pick up may dictate which path you want to take. As stated before, all these lock tokens remain for all subsequent days unless you have an upgrade that allows you to remove them. And as I said, as the white player has um, acquired the black bottle, if they land at that specific winery, they'll gain uh, an additional benefit. Although this may seem uh, inconsequential in a two-day game. In a three-day game, it becomes vital. At the beginning of a new day, once all players have selected all their uh, tourists they wish to satisfy that day, gain any prestige reward, and selected their starting position, based on the complexity of the game you selected at the beginning of the game, you, can, you have the opportunity to potentially remove tokens from the board. This is indicated by these tables here. On an easy game, on the start of the second day, each player can remove one token in a one to three player game or two tokens in a four player game. If this was a normal game, which I recommend for most players, you would not remove any tokens until the third day. On advanced game, you rarely remove any tokens at all. Removing a token does not necessarily guarantee that that space will become available for you. As this is an easy game for our first starting game, the, each player will remove one token each. At the beginning of a new day, place a prestige token on each of these upgrade slots. This reduces the cost of upgrades listed underneath them. When you buy an upgrade, reduce the cost by the number of tokens above and remove those tokens. This happens at the beginning of every new day except for the first one. As stated before, once you reach the end of the game, flip all of your available upgrades over and score points based on the value listed at the bottom of the cards. If you go above 100 points, which is uh, easily uh, accomplishable on a three or four day game, place one of the spare tokens on top, indicate that you've passed 100 points. Just as a side, every token has two facings with the prestige, favor, and photo tokens 
they are all double-sided with a two facing on the opposite side. In the case of these tokens, they have two different locked tokens, either photo on one side or a cheese or purchase and tasting. The pairing specifically has a lock token and a satisfaction token. And that's how you play Naramat. Now the manual goes into details of what all these cards do. There are additional rules for a two player game where you can employ a third phantom player that will occupy the board as you play. Additionally, there are rules for a solo mode and a cooperative fleet mode. Anyway, that's the game. This has been Chris from BSX Mackinac.